Hey everyone! So our topic today is horizontal curves and um, remember you're going to be watching this uh, before you come into class. So it's going to be a flipped classroom. You get to watch the lecture as many times and stop it and start it as often as you'd like and then when you come into class you're going to be working on the homework and JJ and Kelly will be helping you. So I um, just wanted to remind, that, remind you of that. So the topic today is horizontal curves, and if you look up on the screen, remember we did this problem the first day of class. We had, um, it was a highway, and highways, I want you to know now, are horizontal curves. And what did we know about the curve? We knew that there was a radius here and a radius here, which would mean, what type of curve is this? This is a circular curve. So horizontal curves are circular curves. And when I say horizontal curves, I mean um, curves on the horizontal plane. So when you're driving like this, all the curves that you do are actually horizontal curves. And a portion of, so it's basically circular, right? Wouldn't you say that this is circular? If the radius on one side, if this is a radius here, and this is a radius here, this is the center of the circle, and this is a portion of the circle, and the portion of a circle is called an arc. Okay? So now, that's what we're going to be dealing with today. So now I'm going to jump to today's, the area in today's packet that we're looking at, which is horizontal curves. So you notice here we have you can picture this is a, a top view, right? So a top view we know is already a plan view. So you can imagine you're seeing the roof of a car driving on a straightaway, and then all of a sudden it hits part of a curve and it turns. And then it has another straightaway. And then it hits another portion where the, the road starts to curve. And then straightaway, curve, straightaway, curve, straightaway. So this is one, this is showing a road with one, two, three, four horizontal curves. And we know now that the curvature of these are all circular. So we're looking at a portion of a circle, right? Because here's radius one, radius two. Here's the center of the circle. So here's the circle if it were full. But we're only looking at a portion of a circle, which is called an arc. Straight away, arc one. Straight away, arc two. Straight away, arc three. Straight away, arc four. So the next thing that's important for us to know is something that's referred to as the degree of curvature. And we're going to look over here at the whiteboard. And when we talk about degree of curvature, we can have um, a tight curve or one that's more gradual. You can imagine when you're driving on Highway 1, you really have to turn the wheel hard or a lot to be able to make that turn. Um, so what we're looking at, degree of curvature, uh, I'm going to talk about the arc definition right now. And there's another definition that we'll talk about and I'll, I'll define both definitions. But right now, I want you to understand what the degree of curvature is. So this, uh, this string right here is representing 100 foot of arc. So if I draw 100 feet of arc, this is about that. And then I'm going to draw another 100 foot of arc like this. And let's make sure that they're indeed the same line. So this both represents 100 foot. Right? And um, the car is coming in, and here's a curvature, and here's a curvature. Now, can you tell where the center of the circle is? Right? If this was to be continued out, actually, my center of my circle is about right here. Here's the center of the circle. Do you agree? For this 100 foot of arc, here is the center of my circle. For this 100 foot of arc, this is about my circle. 
and I'm going to call this capital D1, and I'm going to call this capital D2. D is the variable that represents the degree of curvature. So can you tell which D is larger? So is it D1 is greater than D2, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right? And what would you say about how tight these curves are? Which one's gentle and which one's more tight? Would you say this one is a, a more tight curve? And this one is more gentle? So what could you say about the degree of curvature? As the degree of curvature increases, what would you say about the type of curve? It's tighter. As the degree of curvature decreases, we have a more gentle curve. Okay? So we talk about degree of curvature, we're basically talking about how tight or how gentle it is. Notice that I talked about 100 foot. The definition of a degree of curvature for the arc definition is that the degree of curvature is the interior angle that encompasses 100 foot of arc. So this is a degree of curvature and this is a degree of curvature. They both encompass 100 foot of arc. There's another definition of the degree of curvature called the chord definition. I'm just going to put it up here right now. So there's another degree of curvature. which is the core definition. And what do you think of the degree of curvature encompasses when we're dealing with the core definition? It still has to do with 100 feet, but now it's not 100 foot of arc, it's 100 foot of cord. Here's my degree of curvature. So the degree of curvature always is the angle that encompasses 100 foot. If it's an arc definition, it's 100 foot of arc. If it's a chord definition, it's 100 foot of chord. Whether we deal with the chord or the arc definition, we're still saying that as the degree of curvature gets smaller, we have a more gentle curve. Okay. So now let's take a look at our packet that shows some manipulation of some numbers using the degree of curvature. So, we're on page 69 of the packet. At the top it says horizontal curves, which we know are circular curves. We're looking at the relationship between the degree of curvature and the radius. Oh, let's actually go back here. Since we're looking at the relationship of the radius, let's take a look at this. This is radius 1, and this is radius 2. As D goes down, See, we said that D1 was greater than D2. What about R1 versus R2? Which one's greater? R2 is greater, right? So as the degree of curvature decreases, the radius increases, and the more gentle the curve. As the degree of curvature increases, the radius decreases, and the more tight of the curve. Okay, now let's go back to the, the slide. So we're looking at the relationship between the degree of curvature and the radius, and D we already know, the capital D represents the degree of curvature, and there are two different definitions, the arc definition and the chord definition. The arc definition means that the degree of curvature is the interior angle that includes 100 foot of arc, and the chord definition is the degree of curvature is the interior angle that represents 100 foot of cord. So now, what's the difference between these two? <clears throat> In civil engineering design, arcs have to do with roads, highways, interstates, freeways. So all kind of roads that have cars on it go by the arc definition. Railroads go by the cord definition. And at this point you might say, well, why is the railroad the cord definition and why are roads and highways the arc definition? 
Tell you the truth, I have not looked that up, but that's something that we should actually look up. So let's take a look at this. Remember, this is we, we looked at the ARC definition and the core definition similarly way back the first day of class. Because remember when we were dealing with that trig geometry problem, we looked at this one slice as being a slice of pizza, and this smaller angle here to the core, the, sorry, the arc length, the length of the curve, versus 360 degrees, the whole pizza, versus its length, which is 2 pi r. So we set up this relationship before. We didn't use d at all. We used the delta instead, and I'll show you delta in a little bit. But right now, I could set up a relationship where 100 foot of arc is to d, 100 foot of arc is to d, as 2 pi r, the whole circumference, which is the arc, um, is to 360 degrees. So I could establish a relationship then between r and d. 100 is a constant, 360 degrees is a constant, 2 and pi is a constant, and you'll find out that r and d are inversely related, which we learned over there. As r increases, d decreases. As d increases, r in d, sorry. As R increases, D decreases. As D increases, R. I have to say that one more time. As R increases, D decreases. As R decreases, D increases. I got it right that time. Okay, let's stop.